If you've been felting for some time, you're bound to have wool leftovers from older projects. Whether some of your pieces didn't turn out the way you'd planned, or you just have little pieces from shapes you've cut out of a felt sheet, there are always bits of wool you don't know how to reuse. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a recycler by nature, so I'm always thinking about ways to reuse precious materials, and wool does fall into that category. So I'd like to show you what happens to the wool rests that I collect, and encourage you to do the same. Here are the leftovers I've been collecting for some time. For a couple of years, actually. When you felt pieces you're not happy about or you decide to experiment, don't throw them away. Wool is too precious for that. I collect everything and then I divide the pieces into the main colors and cut them small for recycling. Let me show you how it works. Before we start felting our piece, I'd like to show you how to prepare the felt leftovers for recycling. If you're planning to felt any item which is three-dimensional and solid, and by that I mean if it's not going to be hollow like a hat or a bag, you can use this method. This is a really great way to use any leftovers you have from older projects. Pieces that didn't work out as you planned or rests from felt sheets that you've already cut out and are now too small to do anything. Well, I guess you could use this for something else, but instead of accumulating the leftovers for years and years, you can recycle them now and again. You normally end up making new felt sheets when you need them anyway. So I'm going to grab these rests and cut them into small pieces, like this. I'll divide them by colors so that I'll have a bag of yellow, pink, purple, blue, green, and so on. Mm, actually, I think I'll add this one to the purple. So what we'll do is we'll cut them really small and then we'll use them to fill pieces according to the color. And why should we use the right color for each project? Because if you recycle rests in a color that's different from the piece you're felting, the fibers of the two colors will mix, as in this ball. What we have here is a ball where I used little pieces of grey inside and then covered them with white wool. What happens is fibres migrate towards the surface. So you get a piece in a mixed colour because the colour that's inside tends to come out to the surface. That's why you should use the same colour for the filling as you're using for the external area. Of course, it doesn't have to be exactly the same red. You can mix different tonalities, but remember to go for the same base color. So now we'll cut them into really small pieces. And if you have wool rests that haven't been felted, but the wool is not okay for felting anymore, say if you've gotten your wool wet by accident, you can also add it to your bag for recycling. Now it's very simple, just cut them like this. They don't have to be too small, but if they are too big, they won't mix well with the new wool you're adding. So just keep them in this size. And this is something you can actually do while you're watching TV or even when you're relaxing after work. At least I find it relaxing. And it's also something you can do with the kids. I bet they'll have fun. They love cutting stuff. So there you go. This is what we want to get. Now I won't bore you by making you watch me cutting wool. I'll just finish this and come back in a while. So this is what I have after cutting. I have two bags, one with purple and one with red, and I'm going to use them to fill my fruits. This video will be part of my next online course. You can find further information about this and other workshops at www.vandafsorza.com. Join the newsletter and I'll keep you posted on all the new courses and free felting videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.